Hello, everyone. Grand evening, everyone. <laughs> good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, hello. Good evening, David. I forgot to say hi to you. Hello, Ellen. <laughs> hi. Miss Ellen. What was that? I said hello, Miss Ellen. Oh, hi. <laughs> How are you? I I'm good. I'm just com I'm really discombobulated, but I'm good. <laughs> good. Yes, we're good no matter what. <laughs> y'all doing thank you for joining us grand rising grand rising grand rising happy saturday night live how y'all feeling how are you profundity crew how are y'all feeling because i am discombobulated as i'll get up <laughs> <laughs> i just like to say just like to say if there's any canadians um happy thanksgiving Weekend. Oh, is it Canadian, oh. Canadian Thanksgiving? Happy Thanksgiving, you all. Surrounding you all, all the Canadians with love that are celebrating Thanksgiving this weekend. Mm. Well, I woke up this morning feeling like, oh, <laughs> I couldn't be bothered doing anything. It was just one of those mornings I'm like, I don't want to get out of bed. <laughs> it I was just. You said you woke up that way too, didn't you? Was it you? Yeah, it was me. I was like, no. I'm, I'm no, feeling Vicky, bad. I, I thought Vicky said she did too. No, I, I woke up feeling like that, but I did the I made myself get up and get my stuff done. And it's been a really productive but discombobulating, painful day. Emotional looking at things, seeing some new things. Not new, but I'm just now seeing them. Yeah. So it's been a good day that way. Yeah. It's been lethargic. <laughs> it's Ellen. It's, it's been a mixed bag for me, but now I'm feeling great. I just had a short little cat nap so I could join you because uh, last night Mark and I were up with the puppies. Um, he, he started crying again for some reason. Uh, and so it's like having a baby in the house. Well, the, you know, <laughs> animals are really being affected right now. A lot of yeah. animals are being, because this is... Um, you know, solar mag magnetic energy, solar radiation is never easy. Lots of emotions, migraines, exhausted. Mm -hmm. A lot of feeling full of potentialities. Good, Kareem. You know, I, I feel peace in, in everything within. Um, it's pretty easy for me to, to keep that peace of harmony within. Because you know me, I'd like to promote the darkness of the womb, which isn't the darkness that people say is out here, but that's where your nearest your light is, is in that darkness in your heart and where the true light is. And so me, I can feel peace and harmony there. But I can also feel, I tell you, when it barely hits the electromagnetic field of Earth, not even getting here to us yet, it hits me whoosh. <laughs> and and I'm telling you, we had a wave come in about 45 minutes ago that whooshed me right into some discombobulation. I was, I was uh, I went outside and was grounding and stuff, but I'm telling you, I'm I'm feeling it. My head for about 45 minutes now intensely feels like I'm standing right under the blades of a of a um, helicopter and and whoosh 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 and like i said it started intensely about 45 minutes ago so i know that means tomorrow that means tomorrow we're getting our asses kicked all over again <laughs> and then we're getting our asses kicked again over on the on the monday and then we're gonna get our asses kicked again on tuesday <laughs> So we got a lot of energy hitting us. And, you know, tomorrow is the, it's that 1010 10 gateway, that Stargate. How you doing, Gypsy Rose? So a lot, a lot of, of energies coming in, you know, 
there's there's some collectives that are saying, oh, it's going to ease up in October, and it, and it's going to ease up, you know, in one aspect. <laughs> it's going to kick our ass in a whole different way on a whole nother aspect because you know it's just going to keep getting more intense as we get into truly christmas eve and 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 that and that full unification on a collective consciousness aspect which is beautiful so a lot of pressure in your head the stomach you know everything about your guys's stomach is is all about your digestive and, and, you know, I speak a lot on, on letting go of my truth, your truth in, in that battle mm -hmm. and, and really allow all of the, the 12 density dimensional frequencies really come together in a unification. And, and this is where you're going to, with all of the upgrades to the digestive system, to the stomach area, to your guys' genitals, your prostate. Um, I said a couple of weeks ago that the gentlemen are really going through a whole lot of upgrade straight to their manhood, if you will. And, and the whole idea of, of being masculine and on all levels of it. And so a lot of impotence, a lot of urinary incontinence. Um, ladies, don't be surprised if you don't start experiencing some of that urinary incontinence. Um, if you haven't already, it may increase as, as we go through a whole lot of upgrading in the sacral area right now. Um, mm. The whole stomach, the digestive system, if you will. And um, so many of you in your stomach, that whole digestive is how well do you digest differing viewpoints? How well do you digest someone disagreeing with you how well do you digest someone believing something different than you how many of you are still in a, in a battle of trying to wake people up and in 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 all of that and so that is a lot of what is going on in the digest digest <laughs> stomach and digestive issues if you will children you're going to see because for those of you that have cleared a lot of the emotional out of your emotional bodies remember you that have children when the children are around you you the parental dna is dominant your energy is dominant your kids are acting out reacting to your energy and so the more you guys clear you this is how it shifts out through the DNA, whether it goes to the offspring or whether it goes to the parents, both directions. And everything that you do, you, you clear for seven generations back through the ancestry and seven generations forward. Now, when I say a generation, I'm talking root races. For the human, a generation is Vicky has an 18-year-old son. That's a generation. Her son is a new generation. When he grows up and have babies, it'll be a new generation. Um, and so that's what, to the human, that's that's what generation is. But when I say seven generations, I'm talking through races. And so what we're clearing, because the crystalline diamond root race is a brand new root race, it is the first root race of a brand new son, if you will. And in that, we're clearing it for the next seven root races going forward, if you will. That's huge. It is huge. And, you know, you get tired and everybody is even. We've been tired. We've been exhausted. And now we're going into the human is going into a space of. The body aspect is that fractal mentality consciousness that linearity is going into i'm tired linda no i'm really tired linda no i'm extremely tired linda i'm extremely exhausted linda we all are and and those those energies the sadness the grief that is coming up intermittently between the joy and the bliss and the harmony and the peace is is that death 
that Armageddon timelines, the annihilation timeline memory. And of course, you're not going to have the, the, the mental. And, you know, I've said for a long, well, for eight years now that we've died that physical death. Back in December 2012, we went into an alternate reality. And so the body is catching up. You know, I've said many, many times that we're collapsing 2012 and um, 2021, you know, collapsing everything in between them. And, and so as we collapse that, as we, we come out of the, the full Akashic records of, of the individual journey, if you will, to come all of us unified to the one path to the light, if you will that sadness that grief that extreme exhaustion is is that linearity going through its death at the same time intermittently with the bliss and with the peace and with the harmony with that feeling of excitement creativity of pure potentiality coming back from that nothingness and allness and learning to stay there you know that is the birth and so it's it's going simultaneous right right now and big demand for cranberry juice i'm not uh, cranberry supplements i'm not surprised on that um you know for those of you that are into supplements i would um encourage you to um really um invest in some indium i-n-d-i-u-m that's going to help with with the respiratory and um, the immune system. And, and you know, let's talk about the respiratory. You know, it's such a big collective thing we're clearing right now on so many levels because of the story narratives that are going on out here right now about masks and mandates and, and stuff like that. And, you know, it's really helpful as we walk through this old energy out here that is still playing outside of us. It's really helpful to keep in mind that there's always two sides to the story. And I know it's really easy to get caught up in the, in the, in the negative side of the story. But remember, there's a story that you guys were enslaved. And then there's a story of the truth that you enslaved yourself. And so in that, you know, as the earthquakes, as the land goes into her more and more into her changes, her land changes and as more earthquakes in, in her and um, more volcanoes erupt. All of those gases and, and, and those ashes and stuff go into the atmosphere. And that atmosphere will circle around and it will affect everybody. And so, you know, for those of you that are really resistant to wearing masks, I'm really going to encourage you to go into your heart and, and go back to an objective space take it away from the main narratives because there's going to come a time where you're going to need them just because of the ash and stuff of, of the land changes and the volcanic eruptions. And the sooner you guys deal with your own polarity and your own resistance and take it away from narratives, you guys will see the truth of things. And, and, and you're going to see both sides of the coin. And that's really where you want to be is, is seeing all of it. And and so, and she, and she's going to, you know, the, the whole Pacific tectonic plates has, it has to shift and it is in your, and you're going to see it, it goes in a circle. And so as we get nearer and nearer, the pole shift taking place in linearity time, again, it takes time to get from the ethers to, to linearity and as we get closer to that occurring, to the north becoming the south and the south becoming the north, you know, things are gonna increase in shifting. And so, and it's why we waited to, to do the land shifting until the majority came into consciousness. Because you, got your, you would have went into fear if we hadn't shifted the consciousness first. We, too many would have went into the fear in the land changes, whereas now, you guys are able to walk through them more and more easily and with more grace and less fear, if you will. 
you know, in the broadband frequency and the old story of good and evil, I understand that you guys really truly believe, many of you, that there's still evil in this world. This planet once have ascended eight and a half years ago, if there was. Mm. And, and it's really helpful to really keep that information, that awareness, and apply it. And, you know, as we walk through these next couple of years, Sadly, in the story of good and evil, it has taken tragedy in order for humans and humanity to to open their hearts beyond. Yeah. And in the story of good and evil, this, the mask, the skin suit is, is what you guys judge. Yeah. How, how somebody looks, their skin color, how they dress, their, their status, what they live, what they drive. Um, Everything has been important about the skin suit. And so in the higher broadband frequency of the ascended world, the it has nothing to do with the skin suit. There is no judgment against the skin suit. There's no judgment against how you look or talk or your skin color or, or this or that. And so that is the biggest difference between the 4D world of good and evil and the 5D world. And so as, as that flips and we go through this pole shift as it gets closer and closer for us, in that there is, there is much beauty as we shift the judgment from being about this to the actual code of honor and behaviors and morals that we live by. And that's the most beautiful thing that's going to come out of all of this. And that's, what's going to bring the peace. It's just not comfortable getting there, but we're getting there. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing about it. Mm. How long will the land changes take to shift? You know, the land will take, you know, it's, it's, depending on what timeline you guys have chosen on an individual basis, you know, in, in one aspect, we're hoping to, to have the majority of it done in the next 10, 15 years. You know, our ultimate goal is, is when the great flood comes in 2033 to, to have most of it, you know, most of it done in a linear or realistic practical way. You're looking at probably about 70, 75 years. Um, but then again, we're in an, in an age reversal, if you will, for those that are, are ascending to a higher broadband frequency. And in that aspect, you know, what 75 years for humans, you know, in the higher broadband is it, almost instantly, you know, for every three days here, 10,000 light years passes by for me. So, and, so, you know. And, and that's really going to be hard to adjust to some of you living in a world that 10,000 light years passes by in three days where maybe your spouse is still in, in this broadband world where only 72 hours passes by. And that's why acceptance is so important right now instead of battling these truths and in different viewpoints. So... Yeah, I'm it's, definitely. Happy. Um, I'm, really, I'm really definitely happy that we're having that we've had this time to work on ourselves before the land land changes. I mean, when we had that recent earthquake here in Melbourne, I I, I shut myself. <laughs> you know. Well, and, you hadn't lived through one before, right? Uh, yeah, but not as big as that one. So that one literally shook you. Yeah. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm really happy that, you know, we're doing all this work on ourselves before all these land changes happen because you can easily see how people would just shut down. I mean, you know, there's a major, there's a major fault line that runs right on the edge of, of Australia. Mm. And, you know, about three, four years ago, I was on a public video and I was saying that there's going to be a nine plus earthquake to the east side, under the water to the east side of Australia. And you can see a building to that. I mean, if you pay attention to 
to what's going on out here on the land, um, you can see it building to that. And, and that's going to be, that's a necessary one. And that's directly tied into the, the Pacific tectonic plates and the whole plate is, has shifted, mm. you know, and, and it's still shifting and, and it's a beautiful thing. I mean, it is, you know, it just doesn't seem so beautiful to the surface world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which brings yeah. me to a next subject before we actually get to our topic tonight. <laughs> and that is um, when we look at the land changes and what we're going through, if you will. Um, it's really helpful for those of you that have awareness to really focus on the ascended world. And I'm not talking about golden butterfly and roses um i'm talking about let go of these narratives i understand it's playing out more and more truth is coming more and more truth is coming more and more truth is coming but we've brought three worlds together we have brought an above world we have brought a below world and we have brought a surface world together and it's really absolutely clay it always starts in the ethers before it hits the land and um you guys are the land so as much as you guys release from you that's why she's releasing from the land micro and macro hand in hand the true hero Heroes Gamos reunion and it, because this is the cosmic planetary ascension it has nothing to do with humans you guys are in her inhabitants you are the effect from the cause and the cause is she ascended you are her inhabitants which means you automatically ascended with her and you guys then at that point had a choice to either raise your frequency to stay in her civilization or be taken out of her civilization because you, your vessels could not maintain that broadband frequency of her extendedness. And so the more you can make it about a planetary ascension rather than your own, um, you guys are just waking up to the fact that you're her inhabitants and you ascended with her. In that, it's really, really helpful to understand that bringing the three worlds together makes a brand new world. It makes an angelic galactic civilization. And so for those of you that are still caught up and waiting for an event, waiting for the solar flash to occur out here, you're going to keep waiting because it's an internal shift before it can be out here. And if you guys really want it, then you'll stop the focus being out here waiting for it and you will bring it into the linearity, if you will. And you're gonna anchor it into the linearity the more you let go of the story of good and evil and start focusing on the story of good and honor. And I'm not talking in or this and that. I'm talking about living it out here. And it's, again, it's not about being all positive. It's about being authentic. Mm -hmm. And as being all positive is an imbalance to being all negative. You want to balance. And so in that, it's really helpful to know. Again, let's go to those of you that are waiting for an event. Those of you who are there are familiar with any kind of prophecy, whether it's the Hopi prophecy, um, whether it's other prophecies foretelling of the coming of the new world. It's really helpful to understand something. If there is a vision, you're having a vision 
Well, I had a vision of something occurring. You have a QHHT session that says an event is coming. If you have a dream time, just like the Hopi, they, they had a vision that something to come. As long as you're already seeing a vision of something, it's already occurred and it has already been played out. Now, for those that do QHHT sessions, you guys, what do they do? They take you into a, the subconscious which and tap into a memory, which means it already has occurred. It is not coming. And so it's really, really important to understand we came back from the future. All of this has already occurred. So the quicker you use and apply your awareness that we ascended, that the world we came back from no longer exists because we're rewriting the creational story or writing a new creational story for the 12th eon time and space continuum to make it a good and honor story like the other 11 time and space continuums. When, when you can apply that awareness, The prophecy wasn't speaking of something to come. Prophecy was speaking of something that already occurred. And we've already been through it. And as soon as you start living the new world that really is out here, you just can't see it because you're caught up in narratives. You're going to invert yourselves. And when you invert yourselves... There's no need to play in the world of good and evil anymore. Because what you're waking up to is the truth of those memories and timelines that you've already lived out, if you will. Um, so that's right, Vinny. You're already superhuman. It's truly a matter of <clears throat> you're not living being superhuman maybe that's the question you all need to ask yourselves <laughs> why are you still dumbing yourself down why are you still playing human why why what is the fear that is stopping you from truly living the world that we all ascended to with this planet Maybe those are the questions you should be asking. And on that, let's go to our topic tonight, which is being yourself. What does that mean? Have at it, Miss, Miss Purplish, beautiful <laughs> Rose. You're, you're on stage. Darling. Hey, darling. You look lovely. Yeah, I found this color on the bedroom floor this morning, actually. And I was like, all my clothes were everywhere. And I was like, look at that. I got to wear that today. So, <laughs> my <Yeah>. fashion. <laughs> That's how I roll, right? <laughs> Whatever I feel like wearing on the day. Um, yeah, I'm not very precious. No, I'm not really. And, you know, I think that if that's the way, you know, that's just a nice way to be, isn't it? Absolutely. I went out barefoot. Right, I actually did manage to put some toenail polish on because it's been coming off for the last four months, right? And I think people are maybe starting to judge me by my lack of... <laughs> That's just your mind getting in the way. People are looking at your toes. But, but you know, yeah, lovely. I went out and I went to a local market. Yep. Um, yeah. I think, you know, maybe what does it mean to be yourself? Goodness me. I think every time maybe you feel that you're not looking at that and removing that veil until you get down to, mm. I think we always feel sensitive, but, you know, are we actually doing something to make somebody else happy? You know, and mm -hmm. if we are, well, then we're not being ourselves. <laughs> does it mean to be yourself? Let's take you back to your teenage years. You know, when you're actually able to 
leave your house, go out with your friends for a few hours, blah, 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 blah. And you were able to be quirky, ridiculous, whatever, crazy selves, yes? And your crazy, ridiculous friends that were just like you didn't judge you, didn't care. You guys were just being ridiculous. You're being teenager. You're being silly. And uh, peace for just people. I'm getting there. <laughs> That's what this <laughs> conversation is all about. And in that, you were able to be yourself. Well, as you mature, you know, you have to you put on all these labels, you become an employee or a boss or a supervisor or a manager or a husband or a wife or a baby's daddy or a baby's mama and, and a hairdresser or a corporate executive or a housekeeper or a nurse. You, you put on all of these parameters that define your personality, that define your character, that demands you put different masks and disguises on. Mm -hmm. and, and then we start the awakening journey and then we have to be gods and goddesses and priests and priestesses and yeah. lords mm -hmm. and ladies and and then all the stories come, become about oh how she is this beautiful woman and this and she rises to her power and and, and we get caught up in narratives, all giving us a whole different definition and parameters of what we have to be. Mm -hmm. And in the process, non-acceptance and, and, and abandonment and rejection take place all over again, because it's just another has-been mask that we're putting on, another title, another all of that that we're putting on of a have been, of a has been, of something of the past that we've already experienced. And so incorporating your higher consciousness and your shadow consciousness and your human fractal consciousness into one and being authentic and genuine is not easy because you got the dark world that rejects you. You're a black sheep. You got, well, I, I don't call it a dark. For me, it's not dark. It's just density lack of light, lack of information, the story of good and evil. But, you know, you've got that world and then you've got the light world that you're, that you're bouncing in between. And this world keeps you in parameters of high vibes and a, of high frequencies and, and all these colored rainbows and, and, and unicorns and fairies, even though they exist, they get taken out of context. And so then you have to fit those parameters and then you come bouncing back to, to really bring that balance here. And so when you take all that away and you take yourself back to the heart, truly in the heart where it sees nothing out here, it knows Diane Parker by an energy signature. It knows Yvette, it knows Rita and Benny by an energetic signature rather than a name, rather than a skin color, rather than a culture, rather than a narrative. And, and for me, I can be myself. I don't care about the opinions of others. Mm -hmm. The opinions of others, number one, will never determine how I value myself. There's no opinion of anyone here or anywhere that, that is going to determine and control how I feel about myself, my worthiness, how I value myself, nothing. And that's a tough place to get to. You know, I don't need to live up to the parameters that I can't say the world word black without being racist. I don't have to live up to the parameters that if I call bullshit, that I'm being judgmental. I honestly can be myself. Good, bad, it doesn't matter. Happy, sad, positive, negative. And, and that is where you want to be. You don't want the definitions and the labels of your ascended self because it's a has been. You don't want the definition and the labels of your dense reality of the have been you got has been you got have been and then you have now and 
in this now, I don't wear masks for anybody. I don't need you to approve of how I dress. I don't need you to prove how I sound, how my body looks. I'm okay. not here to live up to anybody's standards of measurement in any way. The only way to measure love is to love without measure. And as long as you're measuring this in any way, you're not in your heart anyway. So get the hell out of my reality because it ain't going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to ever, uh, you're never going to approve of me because I'm never going to put myself in that position to live up to your approval. I'm not giving you that kind of power. No. Nope. And, and I've worked oh, just like each and every one of you have. That's the whole spiritual journey is it's not a journey to remember. Well, I mean, it is, but it really isn't when it comes down to it. It is a journey back to worthiness. <clears throat> and your guys' worthiness is what's been desecrated yep. by yourself and by your mere reflection to yourself. So yeah. when you talk about being yourself, how many masks do you put on to keep peace? How many masks do you put on to please people, to not rock the boat, to... All of those things that stop you from what Benny stated when he first came on, and that was hello, superhuman. <laughs> yeah, you know, you want to go to homo luminous, but if you can't even be authentic and genuine with yourself, you know, how many of you ladies? And, and many of you, maybe some of you gentlemen that are watching too, have that false pride in it and that vanity perfection template that that demands that that you be a certain etiquette, a certain way. How many of you ladies could shave your head, take your makeup off and walk outside and not walk out in the world, go to a restaurant and not feel like you have lost your identity because you have no makeup and hair on. You would have laughed at me today. I was going to the city to get some stuff and <laughs> I had four different colors on me. And I looked in the mirror and went, ah, who cares? Didn't shave, still haven't shaved. What, what, put on my work boots on and they're scuffed all up. And I went, ah, I don't care. I'm not impressing anybody the way I went. <laughs> gone for six really? hours <laughs> you, you like going out with makeup that the granddaughters put on you too though which well that, like, i do that too yeah <laughs> i think that really shows a balanced masculinity by the way yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah impressive <laughs> yeah. i was painting one day painting my uh daughter fence and i when i paint I wear my clothes inside out so that um <laughs> I don't get three weeks ago on the outside and uh so I ran out of I needed to get something so I ran to Walmart with my clothes inside out and um and when I was in line this lady said you know your clothes are inside out and I said yes and then I, I told her um why? And she said, oh, that's a great idea. I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> I, I did that three weeks ago, going to Walmart. I went to put, got out of the car, went to put my wallet in my pocket and go, well, where the hell, what's wrong with it? My pants are inside out. <laughs> oh, heck, I was standing in the grocery store one day and I don't know, one of the girls was with me and you realize your shirt's on backward or inside out and the person standing behind us heard him right and i said oh is it i said you know i did that on purpose <laughs> <laughs> hey and you know going back to you um before this scrolls up and i can't find it again i wear the makeup being a hairdresser and outside of doing my job i maintain that look and realize that i do not need to impress but what if it just makes me feel better? 
That is an awesome question because Vicky, who has been at my house, I have challenged her on certain things to do with that. Uh, and most of the ladies that come here, because I can see their their unworthiness that is attached to the vanity template, if you will. And one of the gals, they all take it wrong because, well, Linda says we shouldn't wear makeup. We shouldn't do this. We shouldn't. No, that's not what Linda says. <laughs> right. Linda yeah. says to challenge yourself, the intent and the motivation behind it. So yeah. Sally, where you, where you say, what if it makes me feel better? One, I'm going to say I, I'm right there. I understand that angle. But if I may give another angle, and I think Vicky will be able to, to from her own experience, if she will, yeah. um, go from another angle here. So Sally, where you say it makes you feel better, why do you need something outside of you to make you feel better, especially makeup and hair? I'm not saying not to wear it. I'm saying look at the motivation and the intention of why we do what we do, why we wear our hair a certain way, why we wear makeup, how we feel with it versus how we don't feel with it. This goes for gentlemen, you know, why do you wear cologne? Why do you shave? Mm -hmm. What is the intention behind the act? It's not the act itself, which is important. It's, it's the motivation. And, and so, you know, you go through those phases where you, you take yourself back to that, that main natural aspect, and then you're able to balance it out. There's nothing wrong with it, yeah. but it's, we start wearing makeup. We start fixing our hair. We're conditioned as ladies and as men. I'm not even going to negate the gentleman. We are groomed mm -hmm. to feel better about ourselves, if you will, with these things. And so as we start our spiritual journey, we have to learn to look at the intention and motivation of how it's directly tied into wounding and remove that emotional attachment. So you're wearing makeup because it's a unique expression of yourself rather than it making you feel better. I hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And and so, Vicki, go ahead and give your angle, if you would, please. Yeah, so uh, with the makeup, um, I there was a period of time in my, like, 20 years ago where I wouldn't go out of the house without mascara on. There was something about my... I had to have mascara on. And then after I had my son, to take the mascara off, like at nighttime was too big of a pain, you know, cause you got a baby and all that. So I quit wearing mascara. And then it went to a uh, face powder to cover up my flaws. And then I, I, I mean, but I wore face powder all the time. And then I could not go without the powder. I mean, even, even if I hadn't taken a shower yet or anything, and I was just gonna go out and do stuff, I would get a powder brush and cover up my flaws, right? And um, I just couldn't, I couldn't go without it for a long time. And then I think it was uh, in February after I was at your house, Linda, I came back and I was like, I, don't, I just don't wanna, I don't wanna feel like that anymore. I don't wanna feel like I have to cover up flaws, right? And it was all about me. It was all me looking at myself, but I was afraid to go outside looking like that, if that makes sense at all. So um, it took me about two or three days after I got back from your house. And finally, I was like, that's it. I'm not wearing the face powder anymore. And um, <laughs> even my throat even feels wiggly trying to say it. But uh, I remember I went to the grocery store and it's a grocery store I go to all the time. I know everybody in there. And I was like, I'm going to be brave. I'm going to walk in here without my face powder on. Right. And I walked in and I was like, I was like kind of sheepish, you know, and I was like, shit, nobody's even looking at me. <laughs> I was cracking. And then if, even if they did notice, nobody said anything. And I, I was like, that was the most ridiculous thing I ever fell into was the whole 
my flaws at you know towards the end of the makeup wearing and now i tried to put some powder on just for fun a couple of weeks ago i could not wait to get it off my face yeah. it was like whoa this is gross not and saying for me that's just for me you know and then uh, i just want to share one other little thing because I was with a friend of mine, we went out to dinner and there's a younger gal and she had all kinds of makeup on and those big false eyelashes that are really in style now. And he was, yeah. he was telling me how he just, he doesn't like makeup. And he was, so he was like adamantly, he just doesn't like makeup. He doesn't have to think about that. But this gal, you could tell by her personality and everything, she was an artist. And that's why she was being artsy with her look and playing around with how she looks. And I bet she goes without makeup sometimes, you know. So she was playing around and trying mm -hmm. on different things for herself just for fun. At least mm -hmm. that's, that's what it felt like yeah. from her. You so. know, Nebula, Neb I'm going to get to Nebula's. It's odd if you think about it. Makeup is just another mask. Absolutely. I'm right. And I absolutely agree with that. How many cultures want to hide the true essence of a woman? Now, you know, we're conditioned that we have to look good for a man, right? Mm -hmm. And gentlemen that are watching with us, I would really like you guys to share your insights on this because, you know, we need more masculine to step up and put us ladies in check every once in a while. We need that balance. And, and Vincent, you can start out in this aspect I'm pretty sure that if you lined a hundred men up and you asked them that they would tell you they are more attracted to a woman in her natural beauty than with all that makeup on. I understand Hollywood and everything else promotes women to be made up and to look good on a, on a man's arm. However, I'm pretty sure. And again, one thing about the journey is to learn to put yourselves in another shoe and and really see you and the world through their eyes if you will and i'm pretty sure when i did that that if i was a man and i was being intimate and i'm not necessarily saying sex but intimate cuddly this and that with a woman there's nothing worse than than kissing a woman's lips or kissing her cheek or kissing her neck and getting a whole bottle of makeup in his mouth. Exactly. And, and, it, and if you really look at it, that is the one thing a woman does. We're taught in order to attract a partner, we have to mask ourselves. Well, even 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 uh, for me, uh, I used to like going to dances, eh? And you'd dance with different women or something. Hairspray, at least I don't know if they use it nowadays, but <laughs> I would sneeze. It would just I'd start sneezing. I just <laughs> couldn't stand it. And there was one I was dancing where she had real real big, a lot of a lot of hair, mm -hmm. and she wanted to dance close, but so I was pretty well right <laughs> into her hair. I couldn't handle it i go like oh. my mom used to wear those beehive ones you know those <laughs> beehive hairstyles back in the day the yeah. can of that hardcore hair oh style. well i got to the point near the end of the day she says is my hair bothering you and i said god nah, sorry but yes a little bit <laughs> <laughs> i apologize but i said yeah it's kind of difficult for me but yeah with I always kind of went out and appreciated the woman that looked natural and dressed natural, if you will, you know. Lucy Bloomer said, my husband showed me how beautiful I was by asking me why I shave my armpits. He loves the natural look, what a relief. And you know, for me, I shave them and I will continue because I don't like the hair under there because it creates more heat for me. And, and I don't, I'm, I'm already hot enough. I got too much fire, but <laughs> a lot of women that, that prefer yeah. hair on their body. I'm not one of them, except for this one. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say too, the, the makeup and hair and stuff for women, sometimes it's competition too, between mm. women comparing oh, yeah. each other, not, not just competition, but comparing. 
And that's mm -hmm. that's the same with wearing the clothes though, right? Yeah. 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 I told the story, I told a story to Linda one time about how I had a really good friend and uh, she came to pick me up. We were gonna go out when I she was feeling really bad that night. When I opened the door, she looked at me and she goes, You can't wear that. You look better than me. <laughs> she literally said that out loud and I was like, oh. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't change because I was like, well, but yeah. so that kind of crazy stuff. She said it out loud. <laughs> that was the difference. Well, I, I also kind of looked at it that a woman that didn't expose much of anything to me, she, it reminded me that she was more comfortable within her skin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the goal for all of us. You know, being yourself is, <laughs> are you really comfortable without all the masks? I mean, can, is there anything wrong with, with dressing up and putting makeup on or like the traditional dances somebody mentioned here in the comments about mm. the traditional face paint. That's actually kind of different than the masks that we use to, to make ourselves feel better. And it, it's to learn how to be comfortable in your own skin is a beautiful thing. It, it really is. And to be able to, to change the intent and motivation why you do things, you come to find out that a lot of the reasons you do a lot of things is to cover your unworthiness, to cover up your shame, to cover up what you perceive to be flaws. Mm -hmm. Because you have a, 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 a distorted sense mm -hmm. of... Well, a distorted sense of self-love, but a distorted sense of of the world needs you need their approval in order to to be whatever. And when you look at the intention and motivation, you find that you don't even need those things and you didn't even realize that's why you started doing them in the first place. And you become more comfortable. I know a lot of women that that their whole identity is caught up in their hair. Mm -hmm. And if you shave their hair, they would lose half of their identity. That false sense of perfection that we have been conditioned, whether it's a man or a woman, mm -hmm. that false sense of perfection and pride that, you, that you're supposed to live up to will always take you away from the perfection of yourself, which is what you call flaws mm -hmm. is the beauty of perfection in imperfection, if you will. And, and so when you look at the motivation of why you can't, well, I'm the black sheep, Linda. Well, my family won't accept me. The, the world won't accept me. And is it really the world or is it you? Is it your perception, your distorted thoughts that is that is that that viewpoint, if you will? And it is it's such a beautiful freedom and liberation when you don't have to live up to well to prove you're ascended, you have to wear all white, yeah. you know, and and in all of that. Let me read a. <laughs> that would be oh, one of my favorite I mean, colors. What's that? I was going to say that would be one of my favorite colors. <laughs> yeah, your whole, it is, you're right. We're, we're, te we're teaching Elvira how to be a little more colorful because everything around her is white. You know, we're finally getting her to add color to her wardrobe, you know, <laughs> bring a little color into her world. Hal says most women look very natural. We are speaking of Western col culture and makeup and the false body pers personality, absolutely. Many cultures, both men and women, wear makeup for ceremony and religious purpose. And, and, you know, I love that we do.
but that's not a mask. That is a celebration, if you will. Well, from my angle, it's a celebration. Tribal ceremony, this, that, and the other. They're not putting on face paint and stuff to, to cover up insecurity, if you will. Or to yeah. impress anybody. Right. And, and it's a beautiful thing, you know. Tribal culture, staying their bodies, tattoos, and also cultural within this matrix program. It is cultural, absolutely. We have differences. And, and you know, I wouldn't even go as far as say the differences because we really don't have difference. It's just diversity of expression. Mm -hmm. um, other galactic cultures similar to prefer unity consciousness, absolutely. And why I said at the beginning of the show, you know, we have been enslaved that this is what is important to live up to. And in where Hal said the Western culture, the Western culture has been more enslaved in that sense. Um, there, there is much more freedom of expression in the Eastern world and in those cultures. Absolutely. So why is it so hard for you guys to be comfortable as yourself? Can you hear you? Think, hear you, Sorry, guys. Unconsciously, we always looking for the approval of the outside world, approval to have a good place in the school, approval mm -hmm. to belong to this club, approval to have this house, approval to uh, get a job and uh, build your way up, approval for everything. Hmm. Expectations. Mm -hmm. So. I'm going to I'm going to bring up a subject here. <laughs> oh no, right? <laughs> so <laughs> Sheila, oh, where did it go? Sheila brought up something and, and it's a beautiful topic. I walked into the trap of false acceptance by altering my body with implants. At the time, it seemed as though the men I was meeting were obsessed with large breasts, which really you were, and they were reflecting that back to you. You were dissatisfied with the, with the body part. And, and you say, I regret it now. Sweetheart, I'm gonna really tell you to go into that regret and let it go. Let that shame go. You don't need to carry that burden anymore, beautiful. Regardless if you got implants or not, it's a matter of who and what you are within yourself right now. It's not about your implants. But we hear about women getting implants and body altering. How many of you are, are know or are aware that there are many men that also enlarge their penises? That there are men that, that also alter themselves to look better for women, hair implants, um, you know, so, so the complexity in securities is in both genders, you know, um, and, and again, we all have shaped and molded and created ourselves for love, seeking love, searching for love, Searching for the emotional bond of love that we were never given in our early childhood by our parents, if you will. And so, you know, we don't stop to look, especially, you know, females don't necessarily have been taught to put themselves in, in, in their date or partner or lovers or spouses shoes and, and look at it from another angle, you know, and, you know, the masculine have gone through just the same, same as we have. It's mm -hmm. only more focused on women mm -hmm. because society has always desecrated. You know, men have been murdered, have been raped and, and molested and, and gone through all the same things that the women has. But it has never been socially acceptable for them to reveal, be have that revealed out there. And so we often have created such an imbalance between the genders in so many ways because 
we've never stopped to put ourselves on the other side of the coin, you know. And in the beautiful thing about unity consciousness is true compassion and everything comes in when we can see through the eyes of the other. And then because within we can see from their perspective because we don't know what somebody has gone through, what they're thinking, you know, maybe see Rose just had a fight with her son and she has a smile on and somebody tears rolling down her cheeks, but she's trying to smile and somebody walks by and screams at her, what's wrong with you, cry baby? We don't know what somebody, what their emotional frame of mind is in any given moment. Mm -hmm. and the beauty of awakening if you will somebody asked why are we here you know if this has already been done why are we here because we're trying to ascend the vessel with the light body whereas before we would always ascend out of the physical body and not take it with us that's why we're crystallizing and diamondizing the physical vessel and why we're walking through it, even though it's already done. The vessel can't, it takes longer for the vessel to catch up than it is for the light body, which is, is instant, if you will. And it's all of these things trying to fit in, trying not to be lonely anymore. You find your soul tribe or you think you find your soul tribe this and that and then you go through all of your wounding and expectations of trying to fit live up to their standards as they're trying to heal and when you take that self step excuse me when you take back that step back i'm nauseous i'm sorry i don't know if the rest of you are but i'm really nauseous but when you take that step back, you can be like Gypsy Rose. I got clothes all over my floor and I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can be like me. I'm okay with my my house in shambles right now because we're packing to move and we got shit in all different directions. You know, you become okay with, oh shit, I spilled coffee on my shirt. My shirt. Well, I don't need to go change it. I'm going to just get it dirty while I'm packing. I mean, you become okay with what you call your flaws, if you will. 11, 11, right on, okay. let's leave. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah. I, I, I already spoke about this, but I have a question. Yes. I think that Vicky mentioned that it's also, it becomes kind of competition between women to look good, you know, it becomes kind of um, the best dress, the best makeup, etc. And I'm, I'm, I'm reading here that men say like naturally, but in reality, men always look for the prettiest one, you know? Maybe not all. Uh, well, <laughs> That has been that has I, been the experience, you know. I think you need to look at what a man, because we have a false ideation of what a man exactly. believes is pretty and what is beautiful. Exactly. So it's just kind of. So we're going to attract if we are all caught up in a false sense of vanity and perfection. We're going to attract those kind of men that do that. You know, if you're so worried about a woman using you and cheating on you, that's what you're going to attract because it's an unconscious wounding, but. Well, plus, what what's the definition of pretty or beautiful? That's depends on a person's preference. True. I, I would uh, negate all those out of your vocabulary, anyways, because of the emotional attachment to those words. Pretty and beautiful. Are you happy with how you are? You know. Right. Yep. Yeah. I saw mm -hmm. it as a chance to actually experiment. You know, like with my hair and the way I dressed. <laughs> to play with it a bit like a kid right to actually because who gives it who gives a rat nobody does <laughs> so you might as well put something on that's a bit different right and walk out for me it's actually become a blessing right people that get put off by me looking a bit eccentric stay away and i don't have to have those conversations right the <laughs> ones that want to know me go hey you look like you know, 
you're off beat right in the corner, right? You know, like maybe we can have a chat about something that's not, yeah, you know. Um, mm. But I do think, you know, like a lot of us feel insecure about how we look yeah. and we can feel jealous about it and we can compare ourselves even if they're not comparing to us. That friend mm. of yours who arrived and said, you look too good. You got to get changed. I got to look better than you do. Like, wow! Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! It doesn't matter what any. It matters if you feel comfortable in what you're wearing. You right. know. Um, I don't tend to wear revealing clothes. Like this is a bit. Yeah. Even this makes me feel a bit right because I don't normally like to show my breasts because it can bring sexual attention. You know, and I'm not interested. I want someone to like me for what's in here. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah, but I just say if you're not com- wear something you're comfortable with. I like loose, baggy clothing. Right, I can layer it so it doesn't actually show my bump so much. Right, <laughs> none of us. Mm-hmm. Like- <laughs> yeah. yeah. Me, you know. <laughs> I can grow. I've gone them. through a whole lot of that. That this body is who I am and what people want, and and you know that's my par- personality, that's my character, and. And you get to a point where you realize when you when you truly grasp that you're not the body. Yes, you take care of it. Yes, you do what the body needs you to do to keep it in in primal health or whatever. But when you realize you're not the body, you stop competing with the body and stop looking at it as being imperfect. I want to answer a question, and we'll get back to that in just one second. Sweet faith is asked twice, so I'm going to answer it. Is our destiny already played out and and we are reliving it or can we rewrite it? Your destiny is written in the stars. What you guys are walking through and what you're dealing with right now is your fate. And your fate comes from your free will choices. Your fate will always, you will always have your destiny. Do you want to rewrite your destiny? Oh, hell no. (laughs) Your destiny is written in the star, baby, and that is divine sovereign inheritance, divine beings, heavenly paradise, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to label it. Your destiny is written in the stars, and that's not changing. However, what you're changing is your fate. You see, we've come back from the future. You guys have already made the choices. You're here right now to figure out why the hell you made the choices you made. See, you can't change the choices that you've made in your records. It's for you to use the records to gain wisdom, to wake up, to see this is the choice you made. These were the uh, the other options that you you had that you didn't recognize, you didn't choose, whatever it is. So you can change your fate but you cannot change your destiny. Your destiny will always be what your soul reaches for. Your soul will get your heart to wherever it needs to be. It don't matter the obstacles. Your soul will get it to where it needs to be because your soul is your destiny of the stars. And your human is what determines how quick or uh, or slow you get there to your destiny so mm-hmm. all the rabbit holes that you go down on your spiritual journeys and this that and the other that is you using your free will on your path to there's only one path to the light to your destiny written in the stars But we all decide to take different journeys. We're all on the same path. It's the rabbit holes, which is the journeys. That is your fate because you're using your free will to either go off course of this or to stay on this. Here is going to get you to your destiny of the stars a lot quicker. Now, in that, I'm going to say, now let's look at the real part of the question. I don't think you're seeing, maybe you are, maybe you're not. And, and that is going to be, what is your definition of destiny? And, and that is going to, because 
to the human linear destiny is something you reach. But to your soul, the destiny of the stars is allowing yourself to become an empty vessel and allowing spirit to flow through you as a unique, diverse expression of consciousness, of love light versus it being an individual, being yours, if you will. And is, how do you speed up connection to your soul? You don't speed it up. You learn to connect to it. Because your soul, like I said, to the human, three days is 72 hours. Three, three days in, in our ascended world is 10,000 light years. So it's not how do you speed up the connection. It's how connected you truly are and how much you listen to it if you will. And, and your soul will always lead you on an adventure, which is the destiny of the stars. Always ever expanding, learning to be pure potentiality rather than a name, rather than a person, if you will. What was the fateful thing that happened to motivate us to come back from the future to change it? You guys were faced with your annihilation. Yeah. Creation never to be again. You were given a choice. You can, we can end creation or we can come back into the middle of it and we can create a brand new story by learning and looking at the choices we made that led to such a destructive future that we came back from. Again, it's called maturity. Again, and how do you become into maturity? You learn to love yourself. Your greatest weaknesses that you guys think are your weaknesses are your greatest strengths. And what you think are your strengths in all actuality are your greatest weaknesses. Why? Because you use your strengths to get to achieve something. And then you get comfortable in that achievement. You get familiar within that achievement. Mm -hmm. You get cocky and egoic in that strength that now has put you into that comfortable space that you want it in. And because you get comfortable in it, that strength becomes a weakness mm -hmm. because you got comfortable in it. And it is always going to be in what you view as the weakness, the uncomfortableness that will always be your greatest strength. Yeah. So where are you not comfortable as yourself? Gypsy Rose, Vincent, Mariana, Elvira, Vicky, Miss Ellen, what masks do you still put on? Where do you think people aren't going to like you? You know, for me, people judge me on my tone. They call me a man all the time. You know, people judge me because of what my vessel looks like. You know? And for me, I had to become comfortable with the fact that I have a masculine voice and that people were going to call me a man because they only judged me by the tone of my voice, you know? And, and for me, that was tough to become comfortable in myself. Because one, I'm a walking and this isn't my body. So trying to become comfortable with a personality that isn't mine mm -hmm. in the first place is not easy to do. And then to constantly be ridiculed and judged consistently on it. Mm -hmm. And you have to strip yourself naked. And I'm not talking just physically take all your clothes off and stand in front of a mirror. That's helpful, truly. <laughs> you know? Don't get lost in it, Jody. But you have to become comfortable. What makes you guys not comfortable in yourself? And more importantly, really observe. Do you 
fake your positivity to make yourself feel better. I'm not saying it's not something that helps, but do you rely on love light, your soul tribes, this, that, and the other to raise you out of your depression, to raise you out of your funk, to this, to that? Or do you truly allow yourself if you're having a shitty day to have a shitty day and be okay with it without judging it, without trying to, you don't want to dwell in it. Don't get me wrong. Don't make, don't misunderstand my words. Mm. You don't want to leap loop in your mind about it, but are you okay? If you're not at this high of vibes every moment, most a lot of people beat themselves up. Well, I should be happy. I should be, I should be positive and, and this, that, and the other. It's like your grandpa just passed away. How come you have to be positive about that? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I don't want my soul tribe to have to feel my negative energies because I'm sad. And I said, if your soul tribe loved you, they would gladly feel those energies with you. They're going to sit by your side. They're going to hold your hand and hold space for you and say, cry, baby girl, cry. It's okay. That's it. Yep. Your soul tribe's going to cheer you on in those feelings. You know, you don't have to be positive. And, and that's what I mean. How many of you can really accept each other in any aspect of themselves? Or do you tell yourself, I don't want to be around you. You're depressive or you're this or you're that. Or you try to live up to somebody's expectations because grandma wants you to wear a bra and you have adopted the lifestyle of not wearing a bra. Are you truly really comfortable in yourself? Can you stand up and actually be different? Me, I can stand up to anything, any collective and in. Nah, you're not going to put me in that like, kind of limit. You can't accept me for how I am. Then I don't need to be your friend anyway. As simple as that. I'm not going to put myself through that kind of suffering. Because <laughs> I know it's going to cause me suffering down and pain and suffering down the road. Mm. You know, if you're already judging me, I'm not, you know, why even enter? <laughs> yeah. I think that you're such an amazing role model for us, Linda, because the way you are so authentically you I'm I just like wow I, I remember even the first time that I met you when you were just such a straight shooter and I thought wow I love this woman yeah <laughs> like I want to be more like that <laughs> you know we live our life under such pretense and and then because that loneliness of being a black sheep and then we start the spiritual journey and and you're bouncing around and you're this and you're that and you're st- now you're even more flipping lonely because now you're actually alone instead of you pulling yourself away you know t- as a survival technique now you're really alone because your friends don't like you your parents your family don't like you because you're weird and you're crazy now and you're conspiracy theory and you're this and this and na 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 so now that loneliness and that rejection and that abandonment and everything is even more powerful as it surfaced and it doesn't stop surfacing on the journey. And, and so you're, you know, you attract what you think is your twin flame or your soul tribe or your this or your that. And, and, and just to find out that they judge you just as much as, as your friends and your family and everything else. And then, and then that loneliness is even more so. And, and, and why so many of you bounce in, in, on your spiritual awakening journey and why that a loneliness and aloneness and loneliness is so prevalent for so many of us. And because it, it's, it's a rejection on both sides of that pendulum that you, you have to walk through. And this goes for every single one of us. And because you're rejected time and time and time and time again. And people throw the words, I love you around. Hmm. Like it's Vegemite, like it's peanut butter and jelly, you know, like it's jelly beans. And, and we've been taught that. Say, I love you. You get what you want. You know what I mean? And so, 
that aloneness is real because everyone wants to be accepted for themselves, right? And the reason we're never accepted is because we've never allowed ourselves to be ourselves. We've lived out mommy and daddy's energetic nightmare our whole lives. We've tried to live up to society and cultures and religions and creeds and, and friends and parents and high school, all of these things we've tried to live up to in order just to feel accepted and love. When the only thing we have to do besides learn to feel again, the only thing we have to do is learn to be okay with us, with ourselves in all ways. Learn to be okay with with how we look, how we dress, how we feel. And when you stop comparing yourself, you come to find out that you never accepted yourself because you masked your pain. You never let somebody show, you never showed somebody your ugly side or your sad side or your depressed side. You, you've always been positive when you go out with your friends and you, you always have to be positive. You're not going to show your date to the bad side of you that you're an emotional overreactive female. That comes down the road, you know, <laughs> put masks on and so that's why we're never accepted because we never let anybody know the true us we only show them one side of the pendulum yeah and and when you can be okay with the whole pendulum swing of yourself yeah i get angry once in a while don't tell me i'm not like because i'll tell you i am <laughs> you know <laughs> It's okay that I get angry once in a while. It's not okay that I project it. It's okay that I feel it. Yep. You know? Yeah, I get sad at times. It's okay that I, I am sad. Just as much as that it's okay that I'm happy, that I'm blissful, that I'm in harmony, that I'm at peace. It's okay if I'm angry, if I'm sad, if I'm depressed, if I'm this, if I'm that. It's okay with me. And I would rather have somebody see my ugly side, you know, see how I deal with my anger when I'm angry because then they know the whole package that they're getting as a friend. Mm -hmm. Whereas just, I'm just going to look good for Vicky and Alvira. <laughs> you have to like me only this way and you have to accept me. And so that's where you're, that's where being genuine and authentic as yourself comes in. How many of you are really comfortable if you were put in the middle of a stage and you were didn't know that the whole 8 billion people of the world was watching you through a major tantrum? <laughs> wow. Would you be okay with saying, yep, that's me? Because I, I would. Yep. That was one of my yep. better times. Letting that yep. empty out. I wouldn't let the world shame me. Is that going to be one of our next challenges? To go no, out? I, would, I wouldn't put you on the spot like that. Well, I guess I do, huh? <laughs> I do give you guys some hard challenges. Oh, yeah. yeah, you do. You know, remember the $20 bill? I oh, said, yeah. come on, burn that. Burn the control it has over you, baby. And I just yep. lit that. Maybe on fire. Yep. You have to challenge you. Yeah. And you will have every bit of, there's not even ugly, that's right. But to the human, you know, we have all these ideations and categories that, that dictate our unworthiness. Yep. And, uh, you know, cuss words are just like any other word, you know? It's meaningless until, until you put emotional energy to it. And 
when you can actually show people yourself good, bad, sad, ugly, whatever that you label it, whatever they label it. But when you can show them, hey, I am this mountain range and I'm full of diversity colors, you know, I'm wild at times, you know, I'm quiet at times, I'm bitchy at times, I'm happy at times. I'm the colors of every spectrum of that rainbow and all aspects, tones and sounds. And when you can let somebody see all of you, regardless, that's when you're free and that's when you're genuinely and authentically being your yourself. Do I have a next funny challenge for you? How many of you actually did the last one? (laughs) Come on now, let's be honest. What was the last challenge? I think it was go into a Starbucks and lay down, order a coffee and lay down in the middle of the floor. I think that was the last one. Yeah. Lay down on the floor and for two two minutes, it has to be two minutes. Hmm. You know, you want, you want another challenge? Okay. I'll give you a challenge. Go spend a week with your guys' families. (laughs) Not three days. Not four days. It has to be at least five days. Why? (laughs) You'll show yourself just how awakened and how much in mastery you are. (laughs) Or are not. Can you drink? They're all 3D. (laughs) Can you drink? (laughs) Can you drink if you go there for a week? Oh, no. You have to be sober. (laughs) I was only kidding. That was a challenge, girl. No addictions. No addictions. She'll hide that that bottle of vermouth in her in her. My boot. (laughs) Yeah. What did I say? Vermouth. Vermouth. (laughs) Vermouth. Hide the bottle of crown in there. We'll be good. I don't even drink anymore, but. I don't drink either. I was just. It was $20. Yeah, it was a $20 bill I lit up. Yep, same here. I did that. (laughs) Right on it. You no longer hold any power and control over me and light that bitch up. It's a piece of paper. Again, money, just like anything else, holds no power until you give it emotional, it's an emotionalist resource. Same with energy, same with beliefs. It's emotionless until you put emotion to it. And when you guys really understand the control that you put on things out here by giving it focused emotional energy, that's when you're giving it, if you will. Yeah, but Rita... That's a given for you. You live with your mom off and on. So that's no challenge. I'm talking about the ones that you guys really despise in your family. (laughs) (laughs) Uncle that you never talk with. uh, The cousins that you, the last time that you saw it, it was on your cousin's wedding. Those. Go with even like your best friends from like way back. And for some reason you've had like a, you've parted. And and you haven't connected because you had a fallout. You know? you know that ex that, that you that you two uh, hate each other. Uh, you know, yeah. really the the beautiful part uh, of awakening is is again when you look at your past and you look at the exes and you look at this and you look at the people you have fought with. You can really see. And this is what I mean when you've already made the choice and you come back to to understand why you've made your choice. And when you look back at a life review with with any of your experiences, especially the the horrible and the painful ones and the ones that didn't end up good in, in, in this and that, you can see why it played out the way it did. You can see your part in it and their part in it and you see 
where you could have made different choices. And that's the beauty of these nine years from 2012 to, to coming into the unity Christ consciousness at the end of this year. If you actually use your journey to see, you will see why you made the fucked up choices we made, how easy it was, how subtle it was, and that's what you want to learn, how we have subtly railroaded ourselves, if you will. And, and that's the beauty of it, because you learn wisdom when you actually see the experience for what it was, rather than how you remember it from an emotional frame of mind. And that is the one thing that will always railroad you. Yeah. Is your emotional state of mind. As long as this outside world controls how you value yourself, how you feel about yourself, you will remain trapped. Because you will always live by somebody's assumption and opinion being more powerful and more important and more truthful than the truth of the light within your heart, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'd give you guys a challenge and tell you to come to my house and, and see if you could last a week, but my house isn't big enough for y'all. <laughs> Because I would challenge you. I would challenge your morals, your ethics, and your integrity just by seeing patterns alone. Mm -hmm. I can see <laughs> a pattern like that. Yep. yep. <laughs> you know, it took me a long time to, to become comfortable with that. Because for me, I, I see the patterns of the manipulation. And because I can see it, I see it being used on me mm -hmm. and when you see it used on you and trying to stay in a space of unconditional love is not easy. Yeah. You have to try and, and, and stay in that neutral space and still be loving and show the patterns even though they end up demonizing you and desecrating you and persecuting you and crucifying you and, and learn to love those that are in that 3d mentality in those still manipulation patterns is the greatest challenge any of us will have. And it's the one most of us walk away from with a empowered victimization and call it low vibes and high frequencies. And I have to protect my energy and that is the greatest mask that the light side of, of the story of good and evil presents as far as mastery goes. And, and that's not easy to keep your heart open when you're being desecrated consistently. When you have that awareness and you see the manipulation going on and you still need to be loving back mm. to the person and, and, and address the manipulation, if you will. Point out the manipulation, but don't hold it against the person. Because one thing humans do is they always make it about you, the person, instead of the behavior, the action, if you will. And um, I won't be here in November. Sorry, Rita. And... Uh, Rita, you couldn't handle me right now. Truly, I got too much fire going in me. Can you speak on transgenderism? Have at it, team. Because that too is, it, are you comfortable in being yourself? Sexuality is a whole lot of your guys' identity. Yeah. I am now. I wasn't before. Well, I thought I was, but I, I, I thought I was. You thought you were a transgender? <laughs> no, no, no. 
I was, I was thinking of going. I was going to say, is there something that I've missed here? <laughs> That's <laughs> new. <laughs> new info. Okay. I'm talking about being comfortable with your sexuality, not about transgender. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. I was um, going to say, I didn't know you were a transgender. Not that I, I wouldn't love you any less. I have lots of friends that are transgender. Um, no, no. They're some oh, of the most just, beautiful, right? loving people I've ever met. <laughs> yeah. 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 Very accepting of themselves. Everybody that has something, you know, that deals yep. with that. I think. Um, whether it's kind of sexuality or anything that's different to the, the, you know, the system, if you want. I don't know if I'd have surgery. I'd be, I'd be hoping to find balance within the body I was given, I guess. But um, that's mm. it's tough, especially in all of this stuff, you know. It's just one more angle that we're judged on. Yeah. You know. Whatever makes you happy, hey. <laughs> Well, yeah. And you close you your to. eyes, your heart yeah. don't see their gender, their body parts, you know, they, the, the soul don't see a vagina or a penis or yeah. a cute ass or a bubble ass or, or anything else, you know. Yep. So how are you all feeling about yourselves? Do you guys really love yourselves? Do you let each other really see yourselves? Uh, I don't know if it's a hundred percent, but <laughs> it's getting there. Yeah. Mm. Can you fart in front of each other? <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe not on. After blowing yourself, Vicky. <laughs> I can fart. I can fart at home and in front of my son. <laughs> Would be comfortable <laughs> farting in front of Gypsy Rose and Vincent. <laughs> Maybe Gypsy Rose, probably not Vincent. <laughs> Just not being honest. Sure Gypsy Rose. Well, yeah, you're going to live a party right? contest with you. <laughs> yeah. I, I use farting because that, that, that too is, you know, have you ever, exactly. It's something you guys are embarrassed about, and yet, is that mm -hmm. not? Something that is natural. It is very yep. natural, yes. Yep. Yeah, it is natural. But I remember when I was young, we had to leave the room if we farted. We were asked to leave the exactly. room. Exactly, exactly. Well, you're not you going to sit mistake. at the dinner table at Christmas dinner or Thanksgiving dinner and rip out a loud one in front of 15 people because you know that you're going to get grounded from your parents because it's rude. Oh, yes. <laughs> What's rude, the sound or the smell? She was she was like a two years old, two, three years old. And I remember that every time, unfortunately, the little boy had a big loud fart. <laughs> only three years old, you know, and it was very loud. Yeah, it's funny and cute <laughs> when kids do it, but not when it's all. <laughs> but but his parents, his parents, his parents. <laughs> taught him that the only place that he can fart, it was in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So he was not allowed to fart any other place. If he felt Same he, fart, he had to go to the bathroom. Same however, here. Yeah. however, especially for boys, it's okay if they pee on the street. Really? Oh. It is so okay. you can pee in the street, but you can't fart. You have to go to the bathroom to fart. <laughs> That's weird. I know. <laughs> That? Yeah, well, I remember that story about that little boy, like, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That, that is something else. I think that's probably one of the most uh, predominant thing that people are embarrassed about, I, I believe. Yeah. yeah. I remember when my husband, yeah. my, my ex-husband first um, <laughs> parted, it was by accident. <laughs> we both looked at each other like, and we cracked up laughing and it was just such a funny moment it was just and like you don't think about that like it's so natural you know yeah. right yeah the same you know, with it, belching you know oh. um no. belching we're taught to say excuse me 
Oh uh, yeah, part of it, but it's a natural thing. I thought to myself, why? Why? You know. And my girlfriend and I used to laugh, you know, because we we uh, drank a little bit of Pepsi after a meal, and then but we both would have these huge belches, and you know, we'd die laughing. <laughs> it was just, yeah, natural. Yeah. I was in a class in like grade I don't know I think I was in like grade seven or eight so I was like 13 14 and I had a crush on the teacher which made it worse right so and I farted right and I couldn't and everyone around me heard it right I was so shy I was mortified oh my god and so he made us all stand up right why were we laughing and he interrogated the whole class nobody dobbed me in thank god right but then in the end, he pinpointed it to me. And because I wouldn't confess, I had to get detention and stand next to his desk for an hour after class because I wouldn't fess up. And I don't even know if he knew at that point what had happened. But, yeah, I was mortified. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't bring myself to say what had happened. And, yeah, I just did. <laughs> from then on. <laughs> All so I don't know how that affected my relationships as an adult, right? But yeah, I was a bit wary about farting in front of my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what, Gypsy? I had that in school. I don't know. Oh my god! What grade it was, but it wasn't. Mine was noisy, but I'll tell you one that one day I wasn't feeling well, and it did smell. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe her? It's the witch on Saturday oh. night talking about farts. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing left. We talked about everything else. Oh, yeah, we talked about everything. Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's change the shift. Just got to work through those awkward moments, right? Yeah. Let's shift the subject. Yeah. <laughs> it's part of being yourself, right? We are. Talking. That's right. Yeah. It is. Us We're trying to go with our style. That would fart. Oh, my God. <laughs> So seriously, let's go back to being yourself. How many of you can challenge yourself on this? Because I know there's many of us that says, no, I'm really comfortable in myself. But remember, in the inverted matrix, what you think, what you say, and what you do are three different things. And it's so intricately weaved. So even though you say that, challenge yourself, are you really? Look at the things that are unmentionable, you know, like thoughts. And... And look at those things that are are not the obvious of what you say you're comfortable in, if you will. Well, I was going to say, too, some people think they're comfortable, but they're comfortable in their fake self. Mm. In their pretend self. Yeah. Because that's all we know. Right. Every bit of our preferences, our likes, our dislikes are not ours. They're mommy and daddy's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Their same preferences or, or a similar version or the polar opposite version of you like something just because it's not what mommy and daddy like. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're not going to give us a farting exercise in public, are you, Linda? No. <laughs> If I'm going go to go to the ladies' room. I'll be back. <laughs> hey, Kim, yeah, you just don't hold it in. You know, oh I would tell, you know what I tell you guys to do is go stand outside <laughs> HEB or Kroger's or Walmart or Barnes and Nobles on, on a Sunday <laughs> KFC, you know, after church, you know, whatever, and and. Just sit there and say, would you like a hug? But, you know, the, the story narrative out here won't allow that right now. So, <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Here, I'll give you guys, and, and I don't mean this in any desecrated way towards a homeless person or anything else. <clears throat> However, 
You want to see how humble you are with yourself. Go put on dirty clothes, holy clothes, this, that, and the other. Put yourself in the shoes of a homeless person that, especially like in Austin, that has to live with a mattress under the bridge or something. Because there's mm -hmm. many people, even high executives, that have lost their homes and everything and have ended up homeless. And go hold up a sign on a street corner and see how you feel. Wow. Oh, we all think we could do it. Um, I know you all would convince, can convince yourselves that you would. But it's not to humiliate or desecrate them or you or, or the story or anything else. But it's actually to see just how much your identity truly is in the comfortableness of how you have defined and labeled and characterized yourselves. Dress the part of your characterizations and, and really go out there and humble yourselves, especially those of you that have been brought up in this, this false vanity mm -hmm. of perfection because so much of your identity is to that perfection. And in the whole spiritual journey is, is all about becoming a whole different person because you've been living out an energetic nightmare of mommy and daddy since six, six and a half, seven years old when your brainwave frequency changed out of God consciousness. And many have been taught to hold shame, to not talk, to not engage, to walk past. Yeah. That oh, those that God. homeless people are lazy and that's why they're homeless, whatever the excuse is. Mm -hmm. And the whole point of the journey is to learn to see multidimensional from not only different density dimensional frequencies of the 12 density material realms, but also to put yourself in another shoes so you can relate to them and have true compassion and empathy rather than a definition of compassion and empathy on a sympathetic note, if you will. And when you truly do that, you will see just how judgmental you are in many ways, not only against the dressing aspect of wearing dirty clothes, holy clothes, whatever, but just your ideations of what you think towards them that are unconscious judgments. Mm. And when you challenge yourselves out of your comfort, Bones, you would have a hell of a lot more compassion and empathy for people rather than looking down upon them from a sympathetic aspect feeling sorry for them and that's all right diane at least you're honest with yourself beautiful and, and i'm not saying it to to shame yourselves or or anything else the reason i give challenges is that i do is to really show the unconscious part of ourselves, the subconscious part of ourselves that really dictates judgment that we don't recognize that we have. If you take a piece of paper and you write down how you see yourself, each one of you, how you see yourselves, and then the next, how you think, Think the world perceives you. Oh, the world thinks I'm this enlightened being, that I'm lovely, that I'm this, that I'm that, that I'm a golden butterfly and roses type of woman or man or whatever. And the next line, sit there and write down what the world really tells you that you are. You know, 
your family, your friends, your exes that tell you you're a manipulative asshole or a, you're a controlling bitch or you're this or that. That's what the world really has told you you are versus what you think the world perceives you as. And then on the fourth line, sit there, it's like what you really are. Those four aspects will show you what you think you are, what you think the world thinks of you what the world really thinks of you and what you really are do not line up and and again part of the journey to bring those four together and to collapse them to what you think how you perceive yourself and what you really are to bring them as one the shadow side and, and lighter side of yourself and then you can create a brand new being and it's not easy to challenge yourselves like that out of your comfort zone we think we challenge ourselves on, on the spiritual journey by going into to our shadow selves. But the real shadow self is very subtle and it's unseen by us. And that's what I mean by how many of you ladies have your identity caught up in your look. If you shaved your head, would you still feel like a beautiful person? Mm -hmm. You know, for the men out there that are studly, you know, if you became impotent, would you still have your charisma, your identity? Would it still be that? You know, I, I, I did a session a few years ago with a gentleman that had, and no, I didn't check. But his problem was that he had an overly large size penis. And women only wanted him because of an oversized penis. And the shame he carried because his tool was large. And how he wished he didn't have it. We don't think about things that people go through. And, and the reason I bring that up is because, again, it is something that has is such a powerful ideation and yet we don't understand the shame that goes with it and it's it's just another pedal of like a homeless person if you will and the beauty again the beautiful side of it is putting each other putting ourselves into the eyes of another the shoes of another because when we can take ourselves out of our comfort zone, then we learn to relate. We learn to see from a different perspective. It, it was sad. Um, because again, it's a body part that our worthiness and how we value ourselves. That's why I, why I shared it, but... <laughs> Shame on you, Elvira. <laughs> when you said you, that's why you didn't check it, I was like, I gotta get why you didn't check it. Never it. know the thoughts of people, I'm telling you. <laughs> we have a whole lot of thoughts that run through our head, trust me. And it's those challenges that make us so flippant uncomfortable that show our true character, our true nature. And that's really what the discovery, we make the spiritual journey, <clears throat> excuse me, about remembering that we're gods and goddesses, that we're all powerful. And yet the real true 
part of the journey is putting ourselves in discovering the unconscious part of ourselves. And it is only until we can put ourselves in, in, in an uncomfortable position of somebody else's experiences in their shoes that we really see our deep, subtle, unconscious judgment, wounding templates. <clears throat> Oh, absolutely, Rita, they are. But it wasn't about their members. It was about how we shame and don't realize it. So tell me, how comfortable are you in being yourself? Not that much, I guess. <laughs> I'm getting there. It comes in little, it like comes unexpectedly, I think, being my true self. It's when you're trying is when, for me, um, the subtle things come up is when I'm trying. So I'm getting When you're there. trying, the subtle comes up? Yeah, when I'm trying to be myself. It's the trying, that's the, that's the subtle, the trying, trying that's to the railroading. <laughs> exactly. the trying's railroading you right the heck away from your name, your natural self. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. So being, being my true self just seems to all of a sudden, it's like, oh, there she is. Does that make sense? Yep. yep. You know, being genuine and authentic being able to be yourself and not separate yourself into a collective a smaller collective mm. everybody says keep your circle small right and I understand the angle that they're coming from absolutely I understand the angle but if we're a civilization, when we want the whole civilization as our family, think about it. Yep. We don't have to agree or disagree, you know. But to embrace diversity, that is the greatest miracle you can give yourself. Mm -hmm. To really challenge yourself to be in a space of of unconditional love for whatever is occurring. As far as the person, the being, the, the body, and, and really look at how, because remember, in one angle of this, of this whole existence, you are each in your own mental simu simulation with just all having the same background. So one of the greatest deceptions there is, and I love this one. Oh, I can feel your energy, Linda. It's so it's so this, and it's like, if you're in a mental simulation, how can you feel my energy? <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you can't. You're feeling your energy from this, from the visual that you're seeing. You're not feeling my energy. How can you? You're in your own box. <laughs> you're in your own box. You can't feel anybody's energy. You can feel what the in imagery of them being in front of you, or you seeing them, or their name, or this or that. You can feel what that imagery is stimulate, some stimulating in you. But you're in your own mind. So how can you feel me? Now you can put your energy with mine and it will be something completely different. But even that's a, an imagination. How can assimilation feel? 
it can only feel itself. You're just being stimulated by energy, by imagery. So now let's take it to another pedal here. Let's talk about porn. Let's talk about porn. Is energy you feeling? It's all imagery. You're generating energy, emotion, an emotional state of mind based off stimulation. Is that no different than Gypsy Rose, Vincent, Miss Allen, Alvira, Mariana right here, and Vicky? Your imagery, my imagery. Ooh, your voice is sexy, Alvira. It just gives me tingles, baby girl. <laughs> well, how can your voice give me tingles at all? It's just a voice. It's what I react to it inside of me that gives me tingles. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So am I really feeling your energy? No, I've attached to an imagery that is creating a stimulation already inside of myself. And when you really remember that and grasp that, then how can anybody be low vibes or low frequency or high vibes or high frequency? If you're in, if reality is mental and what makes it come alive is the emotional emotional energy you attach to the thought then how can anybody be low vibes yeah. how That's can fun. any how can anybody how can you be feeling anybody outside of you but yourself Oh, that's yeah. And if we that's actually true. embody that every one of us, we would mm -hmm. stop playing a polarity game and saying, oh, I have to be all high vibes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You Absolutely. would understand yourself and you would become again to know yourself. You take no so response. Are we really? Clay is asking, so who are we really? Hmm. <clears throat> Whatever we're feeling. Is it yeah. the same with resonance, Miss Linda? Absolutely. If you're not resonating with somebody, it's because there's something within you that is being challenged only by information. Uh, one of the things that I can share myself is that... Um, I got the realization that who I thought I was is a collage, is a pieces of everything, of everybody, of every event. And that formed me. So if I really want to know who I am, which it, it doesn't matter at all because I am inside of my own bubble, I'm a fractal of the whole. What I have to do is I need to get ready of all those images, all those pieces of everybody else that I put in myself. Yeah. I where you ask, so who are we really? You want my answer? Yeah. <laughs> we are a conduit of information and that's it. I don't like arguing, so sometimes I don't say things to avoid a debate. That's a wounding. That's your unworthiness, Tara. Nobody likes to argue because they don't like they don't like the confrontation. But when you understand that it's the confrontation, because we you guys have been taught you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. So arguing is actually confrontational. And that's some of the hardest part because you're willing to be quiet and not speak a truth to comply 
because you don't like confrontation. And, and until you stand up to your own energy, you don't want to argue with somebody not realizing it's your own energy coming back to you. You're afraid to stand up to your, to your, your wounded energy, if you will. And, and when you understand that the only thing you're debating is yourself, you look at why, why you're debating. And at the same time, why are you running away from debating? You want to look at both sides of the coin, always simultaneously. And, and when you come to understand that we are conduits of information, not emotions, then you stop abusing your power by putting emotional energy to meaningless shit. <laughs> Seriously. Because thoughts create your reality. I said created. I didn't say manifest it. Thoughts create the reality. But it is the emotional meaning that you put to that thought that is going to materialize your reality for the future. If you will. And that's why it is so important to learn to control your emotional reaction, if you will. So if we're an empath, we can't feel the energy outside of us. No, you cannot. Or is it reflected back to us? The imagery is reflected back to you. The energy that is triggered is within you. So when you guys call yourself empaths, shall we, shall we bust another spiritual bubble? <laughs> <laughs> you guys ready for me to to burst another spiritual concept <laughs> you're all empaths right you're all so sensitive right let me ask what are you sensitive to what are you really empathic to Oh, I'm an empath. I can see all of your wounds, Vicky. Oh, you're from this, and you got implants on you, and, and you're all of this. Vicky. Right? Right? So, what am I empathic about? Yourself. Shit, I just revealed myself to me and I don't like that imagery. Damn. <laughs> what are you really empathic about? So now let's look at the word empath. What does it mean? Empath. What does empath really mean? something empty I would say energy manifested M energy manifested that has created a path for you oh. mm -hmm. what's idea I-D-E-A identification puts the energy that takes action I-D-E-A Empath and empathy. What is what do you waken up to in the higher frequencies? Your definition of what compassion and empathy is goes from an inverted matrix of underlying sympathy. Oh, I feel so sorry for her. Look at the condition she's in. Oh, I feel so sorry for them. Compassion and, and empathy is built on a sympathetic template of I feel sorry for them, I feel bad for them. So when you awaken, what does empath mean? That you're, you have empathy. It's not that you're sensitive, it means you have empathy. Again, words are spells and they trick you guys in a whole lot of ways. 
You can't be sensitive to anything outside of you. Why? Because your consciousness and this body is a machine. It's a superhuman, glorious machine. You can't feel others. You can only feel yourself. Why? Because outside of these skin suits, Clay, you asked, who are we? Outside of these skin suits, we are only consciousness experiencing itself in multiple unique angles. Really sucks how we fooled ourselves, isn't it? But I can feel them, Linda. I know it's my twin flame. Well, honey, I'm sorry you can't feel them. You're feeling yourself inside. Remember the movie Avatar? How many of you really loved the movie Avatar? Yeah, that was awesome. Jake is a quadriplegic laying in a pod in assimilation as a blue being in another world. What did he feel? He fell in love with imagery. Did he not? Mm. He fell in love with the imagery of the storyline. Did he not? Yeah. But what he felt was inside of himself. What he felt for her, what he felt for the storyline that he fell in love with was all built on imagery. Mm. You will never be able to feel each other. You will only ever be able to feel yourself because there is no other. We're one heart. We're one mind. We're one soul, one world soul. We just have separated ourselves into thinking that we're Linda and Elvira and Tom, Dick and Harry and Vicky and Vincent and Ellen. So will you be able to feel others after the 21st of December? No, you're still only going to feel yourself. Because even if we fractuate ourselves into a thousand people, a thousand people are all going to be feeling the same thing themselves because we're one soul, we're one heart. Mm -hmm. So you will always be feeling yourself. Vincent and Vicky make love. They're still only feeling themselves, even though they're convinced that they're feeling each other. And no, they don't. They're not a couple. They're not making love. I'm just... <laughs> on them if you will and falling in love and falling into a connection or feeling a love connection it's only inside of yourself that's why nobody can make you angry we've grown up and been conditioned to Tana Ray it's your fault I'm angry well, Tana Ray can't make me angry. The imagery of the of, of what we're playing out can. Because it's a feeling inside of me. She can't make me feel any way at all. <clears throat> because the feeling is inside of me. She's outside of me. So how can she make me feel any way? How can I make her feel any way? Your voice is so calming, Linda. It's not my voice that's calming. It's how you're interpreting the sound and the imagery of it. Yeah. <clears throat> well, my ex was abusive. No, you're the one who's abusive. Your ex is just the imagery that you conjured out here in order for you to feel like you're a victim. And I know that's a tough one to swallow and digest. Trust me, I was in three marriages. I abusive ones. So, I mean, I get it. You know. You have to learn to trust yourself to see beyond, to see through. 
the imagery. I wonder why we feel more drawn to some than others. Do you want the answer, Nebula? <laughs> Because you're, you're drawn by imagery, by tones, by sounds. It's called music of the spheres that create imagery. <clears throat> so what is the one consciousness about? Will something change or be possible then? Consciousness is always ever expanding itself. And... You will never be able to contain consciousness in one body, if you will. And in that, that's why you have to learn to flow. Become an empty vessel and just let spirit flow through us. Let this flow. And... But what about our soul monad peeps, our residents with them? What soul monad peeps? It's just you. Your soul monad is just, instead of 12 soul monads, right? It has 12 aspects of yourself. Remember those 12 density dimensions? Yep that I would call the material realm, you know, higher frequency engines. Okay, your soul monad has 12 aspects, six feminine, six masculine in it. So you have dreamed aspects of yourself into life and you just call them your soul monad. They're just the 12 density dimensional frequencies all of yourself. You just call them Vicky, Vincent, Alan, Elvira. When you come to understand that we're holograms and we fall in love with imagery, it puts a whole different spin on reality, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You know? And, uh, I'll be right back. I got a team call. Wow. That's cute. Yep. Yeah. It's remembering it. That's as you move through your days. It's the remembering that's the challenge for me. Remembering all this. Yep. Yeah. I love the I love the idea of I mean, I hear so many people saying, Oh, I can feel you and oh, I know what that is. And 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 yeah. I've only just some people up on it and um just saying well, maybe you're feeling yourself you know and um and they're like oh how's that so you know it, it makes me realize if i'm connecting with someone and i'm picking something up i'm like oh that's picking something up within me yeah. you know it's an aspect that's already there that's why i can recognize it sort of thing yeah so it's, it kind of really blows the lid on what you think you're feeling about someone else huh yeah, yes, yes, yeah. Whew, that's a big one. <laughs> yep. The soul. Is what about the soul monad thing too? Like that was that really blew me as well. The what? Like, the soul monad. Oh, right. Like, well, we have to have some fun. And when you come to realize that, But Linda, it sounds really pathetic for us. What are we doing here? If it's just us, then and we have no soul monads or, or anything, what's our purpose for being here? Because when you fall in love with the imagery, because it's only imagery, do you have any idea how much fun we can have with creation? You mean I can dress Elvira and Vicky up like paper dolls in my mind? Hell yeah! <laughs> It's only my energy that I'm fighting with. Well, hell, I'm going to quit fighting with her skin color. Mm -hmm. I'm not mm. going to have a problem that she's pink and not purple. Mm -hmm. 
truly, when you understand how your mind tricks you, you get control of this baby and you start dictating the imagery out here. Mm. You don't yeah. have to play with this narrative anymore. You don't have to entertain COVID or this or evil or child trafficking or nothing. You change the imagery because you understand how you feel. And anything out here is only you stimulating yourself to imagery. And when you understand that this is a simulation, a Nintendo game, you stop comparing yourself, you start getting jealous, you stop getting being envious, you stop that survival technique and you start using your powers benevol benevolently instead of shaming people low vibes, high vibes, dark, light, evil, this, that, and the other. Mm. You stop playing those god and goddesses games and you say, hell no. You mean all of this is me? And I could have had all these invisible friends all of this time and could have been happy. What the hell? I've wasted billions of years. And you stop hating on each other because of their wealth, because of their poverty, because of their status, because of their names, because of the way they dress. You stop desecrating yourself. And you start seeing Yvette and Lucy and Tana and Jody and Stephanie and Diane and Clay and Shelter. You start saying, I'm not lonely anymore. By God, I got playmates. <laughs> Truly. Others have cheat codes. That's right, Max. I'm trying to share mine with you. <laughs> you Want to share yours with me, darling? <laughs> Truly, when you understand it's a game, you start working together with each other. You start, yeah. hey, I created an imagery of Max. I created a playmate. Ooh. Okay, what codes do you got for me? Help me cheat and get out of this game. You start helping each other. You start giving wisdom. <clears throat> Seriously. You start showing each other how to get the hell out of the game. Mm -hmm. And you stop taking this damn outside narrative so seriously because it's draining you of your own power. Why? Because you're putting emotional energy and focus to a narrative, to an imagery of something that is there only to stimulate you. Good, bad, or indifferent. Absolutely. Absolutely. MD, when you say you broke your ankle, that's a hell of a lesson you gave yourself, girl. <laughs> your ankles represent your... Self-assurance are, more importantly, your lack of self-assurance. You can go in the break of your ankle. The break of your ankle. You're regretting a recent life choice. Yet, not wanting to change it back. Wanting it, but not wanting it. Indecision. So where are you? Where are you? battling yourself md because if you broke your ankle girl what side is it left or right where to find the first aid kit in the nintendo game needing it badly <laughs> deal with the pain behind it beautiful you won't need no pain pills or first aid kit Where did you make a decision in, in your now now you're regretting it, MD? Because your your ankle represents, you know, how you step in life, if you will, how flexible you are. 
to change and to not change. And you say you broke your an ankle. And, and again, that represents making a decision that, that you're regretting, you're indecisive about it. So, Clay, where you say, are we each the same one outside the skin suit yet? It's one soul. It's one consciousness that's been split into 144. Well, that's your feminine. That's that's your feminine aspect. Where are you abusing your power, beautiful? Using your power to make bad to make decisions that go against your soul, and then you waffle between it, if you will. And MB, if you're if if you're in pain, go back to a couple other Saturday Night Lives and, and activate your inner crystals but I would go into the pain beautiful and I would be talking to it and saying okay what am I missing here you're because it's information beautiful and you can help ease the swelling and the pain by addressing the emotional stuck energy that you've been avoiding that caused you that caused your soul to have to go to such drastic measures in order to get your attention if you will. You guys all got quiet all of a sudden. What's up? <laughs> Let there be silence. <laughs> Hold it. <laughs> See, I don't mind being retarded in front, in front of thousands of people. <laughs> you never. Yeah. I try to do the crystals. I don't feel them, but keep on trying. It's a couple of weeks ago. You guys want to... Um, good night, Miss Allen. Sweet dreams. Beautiful. Asked to be taken into the Arcturian Crystal Healing Chambers tonight, Miss Allen. I will. Thank you. I'm very sleepy, <laughs> but happy. Sweet thank dreams, you. Miss Allen. Thank you. The same to you. Peter. Oops. Do them. You guys want to show them how to activate their crystal? Yeah. Sure. Start with your left hand. Yep. Yep. You always start with your left hand. These guys will show you how to do it. Yeah. Left hand, tell your fingers start to go a little numb, whatever. So I'm how to find the... Yeah. the so you might have it's like a hollow spot, if you will. Mm -hmm. Just hold on to it for 30 seconds. Yep. I, I get it to where my finger starts to feel funny. And then you switch over and then you do the right side. Same mm -hmm. spot. Press on it. Mm -hmm. For so many seconds. And then, then I just kind of make sure I feel. Don't touch your hands, but bring them in. Make sure you, you can feel the, uh, like a magnet. You know, put a north side <laughs> positive. You come in and it pushes away. That's the feeling you want. Mm -hmm. And you do that and you feel it. And then I just really do this quite well. And as I'm doing that as well, you take your left hand and put it where it's sore or what you're trying to heal. But also call in and ask for uh, the divine to bring in this healing light. Bring it in through your body, <clears throat> through your crown. I bring it in and have his light go through every cell or ion in my body. And then wherever you like the cell, just put it on my face, need that healing and put my right hand over my heart and feel and visualize and feel the white light healing light coming in from source. And you could feel it and ask him, uh, well, actually, as it goes through your body, you feel the irons, you can feel it. Bring it to your heart and then bring it, bring it to mm -hmm. the feeling coming through your hand. 
-hmm. and just hold it and you can either touch it or I kind of keep it maybe an inch away mm -hmm. and uh, and you just keep asking for the light and yeah you mm -hmm. can feel it you can really feel it and even if you don't feel it um just know that it's happening because yeah, you don't believe, yeah you like, trust it trust it yeah believe, yes yeah and and even when you stop doing it sometimes the healing will continue your body's still working on itself so like the other day i had a um a bit of a sore throat and um so I did the same thing that Vincent did. I just put my hands around my throat like this and just held it there. And when I first started doing it, I must admit I didn't really feel anything coming through my hands, but um, now I do. But I just know that I don't have to control any of it. It's all coming through my hands via creator sending that, that energy. So it's the intention of it. And when I feel like it's done, I can just remove my hands. Yeah. But the thing is, is, is believe it and believe in yourself that it's entrusted, trust yeah. in your spirit that it's happening. I mean, if you have an inch of doubt, of totally. course, you, you know, you know what, it's not going to work. So well, you really have to trust it. Sorry, go ahead, Nick, Vicki. That's okay. I was going to say no expectations either, because it well, can yeah. happen instant. It could have, you just, and then just let it go. Just breathe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other thing as well um, is that sometimes, yeah, with the expectation, um, sometimes there's something that you need to experience with that as well, with having that um, that pain there or whatever it is. So sometimes we just want to remove the pain because we don't want to feel it. But then sometimes just in feeling it, there's um, something else will shift out of it as well. Yeah. yeah. And also, too, you can um, go mighty I am presence. Oh, yeah. And ask and ask your uh, I forget the word that that's in the the command, but um, when you say that, ask your ask your higher self because you're saying, "Mighty I am present." Please take uh, take my vibrations a little higher than this vessel's pain is as of right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, while still while still releasing. And still, so yeah, I didn't remember. Emotional. That. Well, that's the extra part at the end yeah. while still yeah. releasing the blocked emotional energy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because it is a blocked energy. Yeah. Yeah. And just to be mindful about that, is when you're shifting something that's blocked energy, it means that it allows the meridians to run again, which means that whatever was stuck there zoom, <laughs> will come to the surface to be felt. So, yeah. So when What were you thinking about? What were you doing when you tripped? Ooh, you do a pottery wheel clay? Oh, that would be so beautiful. I bought I we bought a one for my grandkids for Christmas. Mariana wants to try it. That'll be fun. What are the Arcturian crystal healing chambers? It's where your your soul leaves your soul fractal leaves your body in goes up into the healing chambers and actually it's already there on the other side of the on the other side of the story <laughs> you guys are have been in crystal healing chambers and in the, we, your soul goes into crystal healing chambers and the Arcturian families are helping you align your guys' physical vessels with your with your life body if you will but the reason i was asking md what was going on because that's going to give you a clue of what you're avoiding so say vicky it's the left one broken the other one is sprained can't walk it's my sister i really don't know what to do with her I can't deal with the emotions which are triggered in me by her reflecting. So I decided the day before yesterday, I'm going, going to love her, but still not going to talk to her anymore. Okay, well, that's why you broke your ankle. You're rejecting yourself because you're making it about your sister, not about you. And the left one is the one that's broken, which is the feminine, which is representing you. So... 
can't walk. It's my sister. I really don't know what to do with her. You can't deal with the emotions which are triggered in you by her reflecting because you don't want to see what? Anyone tell me? Because you don't want to see the pain and feel the pain. Those with eyes to see, see. Those with ears to hear, hear. So that's why you broke your foot, beautiful, because you won't deal <clears throat> with your emotions and you're putting it on her. She's a reflection, honey. It's a mirror. Because her behavior is really hurting and abusing. She also hurt me physically. Most of my energies injuries are left-sided through life. Matt, that doesn't surprise me. I'm assuming, tell me if I'm wrong, but from your picture and whatnot, and the energy I pick up here, that masculine reflection of myself. So... For you, you're in a masculine body. Your higher self is feminine. So your inner wounding will be, the left side will be that feminine. But MD, where you look, because her behavior is really hurting and abusing, I can tell you, honey, on the mirror that you're refusing to look at and that your broken ankle is showing you the truth of, your behavior is really hurting and abusing. You're not going to talk to her because of how you feel inside, what she's triggering inside of you. You're putting blame on her. Mm -hmm. And she is not making you feel any one way. And your soul cre keeps the mirror hurting you because you're hurting you by not dealing with the pain that is within you, the suppressed energy within you. And, and I know that's not exactly what you want to hear, beautiful. Um, but again, you're in a female, you know, that's the left side. You got a female body reflecting back to you, beautiful. You have a swollen left knee currently, your knee. How bendable are you in life? Your knees, your legs are what supports the energetic burdens that you carry. So you, so that acts absolutely a, if it's on your left side, I'm going to tell you that's directly tied into your mommy wounding. An unstable foundation. You know, not having that emotional bond of love. You're really balanced. You injured both sides. <laughs> but the last thing MDI would do don't fall into don't fall into that, that separation that the matrix is putting you in I'm not going to talk to her anymore it's all her fault because honey you went to broke your foot the universe would not have had to bring that drastic of an experience into you, into your physicality, had you not been avoiding this for a long time. You've not, it's come around and it's come around and it's come around and you, and you, you putting a blame out here. Take, take the ownership. Yeah. yeah. Remember, even the simulation is all our own energy. So you're abusing yourself. How are you abusing yourself? Because you're rejecting them and abandoning and denying how you feel inside and it's your sister's fault. You're so mean to me, Elvira. When we blame somebody for how we feel, clear, cancel, and delete that, by the way. When we blame somebody for how we feel, beautiful. That's because we don't want to feel the pain inside. It's too hurtful. Mm -hmm. We don't want to take that kind of accountability and that ownership of how we feel inside. So it's automatically Vicky's fault. 
<laughs> I love you, Vic. I know. I love you too. It's my fault all the way around. 360. That circle of life. It's it's all of our fault, faults. Reen Astra, you know, it's not unusual when your guys' hands get really hot like that. Lay them for a few minutes this way and a few minutes this way in Himalayan pink salt. You know, Jody, just ask, ask <clears throat> before you guys go to bed at night, if you're not familiar with your galactic star families and the different star races that you, that you are part of, ask yourself, I am present self, this, that, or the other. Please give me deeper clarity, deeper revelation, deeper truth, and and I respectfully request to connect to my star families. And, and you will see, you know, that you'll start, things will start coming in more. Your algorithm on Facebook or social media or stuff will start bringing up articles about the Arcturians and or the Syrians or, or whoever you ask for, if you will. Um, you'll see it on any, you know, Google, this, that, and the other, all the algorithms are completely generated by your soul. Again, you're in a mental assimilation. You know, we like to blame social media for, for censoring and stuff like that, but they're not censoring you. You guys are censoring yourself. So, you know, like when they say this fact checking and, and, and information like that, it's your soul showing you that you don't need to read that information. It's not that truth is being censored. It's distortion of lower timelines that you no longer need. You don't need the rabbit holes. You don't need the conspiracy theories. You don't need that because your soul is trying to keep you in the broadband frequency send it into but it's the human that's choosing to entertain narrative if that makes again you got to learn to see through this if you only see one polarity you're missing you're missing half the information if you will yeah that that's so true too because nothing that you've ever um put up has been censored or fact checked because i stay neutral to it I'm not going to say that. the matrix. I'm going to make love to that. I'm going to make love to the matrix. Why? Because you guys are the universe and the universe is you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, is the universe not the matrix? Just yep. a different label, different word. It's demonized if it's called the matrix, but it's holy if it's called the universe. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. <laughs> it's the same thing so when you stop stop demonizing the matrix oh you're censoring me oh you're enslaving me oh you're this oh you're that and understand that the universe and the matrix are your consciousness and you stop demonizing yourself and start making love to the matrix the matrix is going to put back on you your own energy so if you're demonizing Vicky and Vincent and, and Elvira, the Matrix is going to say, oh, hell no. And they're going to put that right back on you. Your own energy rippling back. So if you sit there and tell the Matrix, I love Vincent, and you really mean it. I'm not telling, saying romantic, but I mean, you feel energy for that image. You're stimulated by that sound or that tone or that this or that pink beautiful sweater Vicky's wearing instead of desecrating the matrix imagery that they put in for an experience so you can evolve yourself you start loving the matrix MD for you like with your sister if you will you're demonizing the matrix. You're demonizing and abandoning and rejecting and denying your soul and demonizing it in the process. 
Why? Because you're making it about the matrix. Your soul pro provided this experience for you to evolve yourself. So when you start making love to the matrix, instead of demonizing it, instead of accusing it of enslaving you, enslaving you when the matrix knows you enslaved yourself by your own lack of honesty, integrity, principles, morals, blah, 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 blah. When you start making love to the matrix, to the, come on. Since when did you start standing on tables? <laughs> oh, you just want attention. Okay, say hi to everybody. <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. What? I'm going to shake my hand. Nice. Right. Telling mama. Mama. It's time to get off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you did a good oh. tree. You see his ears. Look at that. Yeah. Like I got it before. You want a tree? That's Snoopy. He's Arcturian. You just think he's a dog. <laughs> what do I mean? Make up the matrix. That's what I mean. Be nice to the matrix. Thank the matrix for bringing you the experience so you can evolve yourself. See through the mask of Vincent and Max and sister and cat and dog and baby mama and, and X and this, that, and the other. Instead of blaming the universe for your problems, because the matrix is just the universe. You are the universe and the universe is you. When you stop demonizing yourself and you say, okay, universe, this is what I want. This is what I need. This is what I desire. You use the universe like a restaurant menu. Max comes up and says, okay, I need $5,000 for... My son's break. How can I help you? I, you materialize it and manifest it into my reality. How may I help you, universe? And here comes shelter into Max's present. Oh, the universe gave me somebody to assist to keep me occupied while they're manifesting the $5,000 experience that I need for my son. Mm -hmm. And in that, that's what I mean by make love to the universe, to the matrix. We are demonizing it. We're, we're putting the matrix as good and evil. We're good and the matrix is bad. Well, we wouldn't be here without the matrix. That's what our consciousness is, is it's keeping us alive. Our body's alive so our consciousness can experience living, if you will. And when you stop rejecting and demonizing, good night, Vincent. Sweet dreams. Love you all. Thank you. Bye. Do the chambers. Do the chambers. <laughs> see, in, see you there. Sweet dreams, Vincent. I love you. Love you all. Thank you. Love you. So that's what I mean by make love to the matrix. It's the universe, and you are the universe, and the universe is inside of you. So as long as you demonize that tesseract matrix, you're demonizing yourself. And when you truly learn mastery, you start letting the universe and the matrix be your friend. And the matrix, please be your guardian protector rather than being that which enslaves you that which you demonize so they have to produce imagery out here to support what you say it is and and, and why i say stop giving your your energy to the narratives out here let it play out the way it needs to play out you focus on the underlying the energy to shift the imagery if you will. 
So I hope that helps. But on that, thank you all for joining us. Thank you guys for supporting Profundity Yours. Yeah, thank you. Truly. For those of you that do sessions with me, thank you for that. There you go, Max. You needed you need 5k for the house deposit yesterday. It'll be here right when you need it if you haven't got it, honey. Truly. Let the matrix become your friend instead of your enemies. Yes, when you go through heartbreak, you're doing it to yourself, beautiful. Mm -hmm. I know that's hard to to truly grasp at times. Yeah. But really, when, when, you, when you get here, it's much easier to see, it really is. And when we have each other to show different angles of perspective rather than we have to be in my truth or truth in a frequency of truth, mm -hmm. that's what we need. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need each other because we are each other. And we're not a threat to each other anymore. And when you realize you're not a threat to each other and you don't have to be envious and and compete and compare yourselves to each other and you can see each other as a unique diversity that's there to offer you a different angle of light prism, you create a beautiful rainbow world for yourself, truly. And that's the beauty of it. The matrix will bend the light whatever way we need it in order to see all aspects of ourselves, to unify ourselves. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Well, time is precious. So thank you for sharing your moments in time with us. Yeah. And we'll see you all Monday morning for coffee, tea, and profundity. Have a great night, you all. Happy 1010 portal. <laughs> Let's dance. All you need to do is set the intention and say self. I am walking through the portal. Have a great night, y'all. Bye-bye now. Bye -bye. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you all. Well, the rest for joining us. Thank you all. Thank you, guys. Let's well, make it happen.